Today, we're gonna to take a look at the use of contrast in web design. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my video on UI design, but you could watch this full UI design course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description and use YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, Gary Simon of course, Cetro.com. So today we're going to be taking a look at contrast, which is something that I find that a lot of people are just getting wrong, when, especially when I'm doing my Friday live review critique shows. And what we're going to be looking at is sort of like a, and it's an Adobe XD prototype I created just for a little bit of a presentation to show you some examples of bad contrast versus good contrast in relation to the usage of ph photography and photographs in your UI designs, but also just general UI elements and components as well. All right, so hopefully you're gonna learn a lot. If you have, you know, if you're new or relatively new to UI design, please watch this. It's gonna help you tremendously and your visitors who are visiting your website. All right, so if you enjoy this, of course, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. All right, so here's our first example and we're gonna be looking at photography in the use of your layouts and your UI designs. And we can see over here, we have uh, a headline, the scenic route, and also a call to action button where you can only see your options. You can see explore uh, barely, and that's a major, major no. And you want people to be able to see, especially when it comes to your, your call to action text, you want them to be able to read that and immediately uh, and see it. Uh, so one such way of remedying this problem, which this is a problem I see frequently on my live design reviews on Fridays, uh, one such way of, of remedying that is to simply adjust the opacity. So uh, if you're dealing with CSS, which you likely are, uh, you take a, uh, you make sure the background of behind the, f f the photograph is black or some other dark color, and then you drop the opacity of the background image itself through CSS. All right, so now if we go back and forth, you can see how much easier it is to see this explore and also parts of the type where it's on top of this kind of low contrast blue in, in relation to the white. Everything becomes much easier to see. You can still use your photograph. It's not as vibrant, of course, uh, but still the most important element is to make sure that you can see these elements right here. So that's, that's one method of doing it. You can also take the inverse approach. So if you want to use a dark, uh, foreground elements for your type, then you can do this as well. So in this case, you would just, I make sure that the background element behind the photograph is white instead of black. All right. So let's check out another example. Here's an example. That's even more crazy. Um, we have so much happening in terms of color, uh, in terms of contrast with this photograph itself. So I made no adjust adjustments to this photograph. I, it's taken straight from Google Images. And I, as you can see, there are some issues here. So the scenic pout or route, see the, the part of the bottom part of the R gets lost. And I see people do this sort of thing all the time. It's also kind of hard to see explore your options as well. So using that same technique, suddenly everything is much easier to see. And instead of maybe using a white, well, you could tint it as well. So you could put like a green uh, background behind or bring a, a, a green color behind the photograph element and just take the opacity down from the photograph, just like this. Same thing with blue. So these would all be acceptable. Now let's take a look at an example. We've just been looking at white and black text, but sometimes you want the text to have color. In this case, this is horrendous, very difficult to see. So. How would we improve this while still being able to use this background image? Well, we're going to have to make it more of a, of a watermark or, or something that doesn't just stand out so much. All right. So now we can just barely see it, but we can really see a clearly defined type right here. 
And the inverse applies as well if you're to take a black background behind the photograph and drop down the opacity. Both acceptable. Now here's another option. So instead of adjusting any of uh, the opacity, which really hurts the vibrancy and the color of the photograph, if you can find a photograph that uh, has enough of an area where there's a consistent sort of uh, a value, as it's referred to as an art or, or the, the or darkness or lightness, then situate and specifically using CSS, your text so that it will stay there. Now, in that section. So the one thing that's very important is you want to make sure this works for responsive because depending on the image, uh, when it, it may work on a desktop, but it may not work on like a tablet or a phone. So for instance, like more of like a tablet or a phone, we can see this image works well, um, but sometimes they won't depending on the specifics of the image itself. And so you will have to make uh, adjustments to the type with media queries uh, to make sure that none of the type gets cut off. That's so important. So when you're working with your design, uh, when you're doing the HTML and CSS process, drag that window, the browser window, when you're previewing it in to make sure there's no issues. Of course, this is an Adobe XD prototype, so we're not going to really see that. Now let's take a look at um, some non-photograph based uh, examples of contrast. So right now we can see um, we have a nav bar, we have a little bit of a menu, an icon over here, and a logo with color. All right, so th this nav bar, even though it's kind of dull and grayed out, you can still see these elements, but we can see due to the color here, it really kind of makes it hard to read. So this would be a no. Um, so really try to remember what we're focusing on is contrast here. As long as you get the contrast down, you have a million options and a million different ways to go with this, which you're going to see in terms of color and contrast. So this is another example where, okay, we went away from the gray and we used a colored background, but still can barely see this sum right here. There's not enough contrast. So how would you improve, improve that if you had a requirement, perhaps this is part of uh, the color scheme in the site and you wanted to use this? Well, you could do this. That works just fine. Now we can see the contrast for some much more. You could also do this. Th these colors work well together, but really just focus on the contrast. Everything works well in terms of the contrast here. This would even work. We can go even lighter, so light that there's, with this color or this hue, that we could still see some quite well. We could do this. We could even do this, so we can invert our, our color scheme so we have a black background. In some company, this being white, this does definitely contrast enough. This doesn't, so again, how will we improve that? Well, we can go back to white. Again, all of these colors right here, if we're looking at you know, the colors of the nav bar backgrounds along with uh, the type that are on top of them and the background in relation to each other are all contrasting well. Now here's uh, something, a, a different approach that we see sort of in uh, more modern layouts. Uh, for instance, on the, the Discord uh, app, they have dark backgrounds with panels like this nav bar container that are, uh, they don't contrast high, but that's because they don't need to. They're not elements that you have to read or be able to see easily, but you could still identify them and it helps frame the layout. Uh, and still we can see everything is still contrasting well. Same thing here with the reverse option. So sometimes you have a light UI version. Uh, we have like a very light gray. It's almost a white background. And then we take this foreground element and make it white. And it works quite well still. Everything contrasts well enough. All right, so now I'm gonna show you just the values of the opacity adjustments in some of these, uh, the Adobe XD prototypes. So this is the entire uh, prototype that I just showed you. And so as we could see here, if you look at the opacity, this is a 100% opacity. And if you encounter a situation like this, then where you, know, where you can hardly see any of the type based on your photograph, Again, there's multiple ways to deal with it. You could you can do adjustments in terms of the position of the background element, which you can control with the CSS properties. You can also 
Inversely, you could adjust the positions of your type-based elements so that perhaps they're maybe in areas that you can see much better, sort of like this. Or you can do what I did down here. And we can see behind it, there is another layer here that's black. And on top of it, we took the opacity down to 44% from 100%. Same thing here. So this is 29% opacity with a white background. And we can see, I also inverted this so that we can actually see uh, the type here instead of leaving it white. All right, and basically the same thing here. And I think you get the point now. So that's one of the key takeaways that I, I really wanted to stress this video is that when you, you're dealing with photographs in your web designs and your layouts, and you have elements, foreground elements that are type-based, for instance, that are sitting on top of them, make sure there's no areas that are difficult to read. You want everything to be really easy and immediately identifiable to read. This right here, yeah, you could say, okay, you look close enough after a second or two, it says explore your options. That's not what you want. You, people, you want people to be able to immediately identify this. And plus, not everybody has great eyesight anyways. So... Like in this case, you may want to drop this down even more so people can have a very easy time to be able to read and see all of the type. And of course, the, the, the idea of, con of contrast doesn't just lend itself to phot photography and the use of photography in web designs, but also the UI itself. Simple elements like this need to contrast well. So you can see the adjustments that you can make and you can get really creative with this. I know we're applying a very specific rule in terms of contrast, you must have contrast, but outside of that, as long as you adhere to that contrast and the principle of good contrast, then you have a million different options in terms of how you want to style your user interface. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and you learned something new. If you did, make sure to like, leave a comment and also subscribe. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.